The heritage of a city is the only surviving link connecting the dots between the past and the present. Welcome to Bhut Bharat Bhavishya. In today's episode, let's get to know the journey of Archana Deshmukh, a conservation architect based in Pune. Her organization Nasadiya emphasizes on the preservation, renovation and adaptive reuse of ancient and historical structures. Through increased efficiency, her ideas for sustainable architecture aim to minimize the polluting impact of buildings on the environment. Speaking of the architectural legacy of the Queen of the Deccan, Archana has shared some interesting insights of Pune and also sparkled some anecdotes from her childhood. Hi Archana ma'am, thank you Hello. so much for taking out Hi. the time to speak with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, what drew you to this line of work? Okay. <clears throat> First of all, thanks a lot, both of you very passionate, uh, uh, you know, young enthusiast, uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me for this. Thank and you for uh, I'm part. glad to accept your invite. And uh, right now we are in old city of Pune, and these these are the area where I grew up basically. And I grew up in a page areas which are considered to be the old town of Pune city. The way you have uh, po poles and katra and kuchas in uh, Ahmedabad or in uh, Delhi, the same way uh, Pune has pet areas. And the pet areas uh, once upon a time had uh, small lanes and the wadas around it. Wada is a traditional dwelling which is a kind of a courtyard house. And I grew up uh, in the joint family in, a, in such one of the courtyard houses. And I think um, from there, uh, my liking began towards the history, culture and heritage. So currently, I am a practicing conservation architect in Pune. We are based in Pune, but we work pan-India. We work on uh, various uh, categories of heritage, right from uh, temples to uh, vadas, traditional dwellings to uh, 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 the modern heritage, the pre-independence heritage or the palaces, public buildings, colonial era architecture and also fort and fortified heritage. So we have a range of uh, heritage structures that we work upon. But my liking began right from my household where my grandfather and great-grandfather was in the similar field. My great-grandfather was an artist himself and my grandfather was uh, an architect, but he was also an uh, 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 also a artist more than architect because they all worked with hand. And nowadays we have the softwares and everything. But I've always seen them to be you know wonderful artists, and they created kind of work. So all these uh, all those things really inspired me to who I am today. So. Yeah, this is something. It, it 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 came from the family basically. Right. So what you are doing, it's a very niche part of architecture on the whole, right? So That's what correct. drew your interest towards the conservation of historical sites and so you know it is a very interesting story that you know when when I was growing up, my grandfather took me around to uh, you know sometimes in uh, some particular temple or sometimes to a very fascinating heritage site around Pune. So I was always drawn towards this historic site and their serene and calmness uh, the site had. And uh, when I was in seventh standard I decided that I want to be like my grandfather. I, I want to be an architect but I didn't know anything about archi architecture. So uh, when I started studying architecture, I I came across with Intag and uh, I did volunteership for them, and that's when I uh, you know updated the list of heritage structures around Pune, and you know that is when it was a very interesting part because you need to go to that particular structure and check whether it is there or not, what condition it is in today. And then we, you know, we started going on cycle to all these lanes and gullies and then we, we started marking, oh, this is lost, but this is in better shape or, you know, 
so we kind of updated the list which was made in 80s early 80s another, uh, another uh, project came to us which was basically interviewing the old generation uh, which we were losing at those times so we we started interviewing o- old people you know we used to go to temples and we used to go to the bridges or uh, you know the parks where these old people uh, used to gather uh, together uh, and we started interviewing them and then we got to know more and more facets about their lifestyle and you know what they've been through and you know even stories of uh, uh, freedom fight or you know during the second world war and you know we we met a few of them who were from the first world war era as well so you know it was i think really fascinating for me was people and their stories on that note like you rightly mentioned the stories are incredibly inspiring so so what impact do you think stories and culture and the people on the whole have on the architecture of a place so if we take the instance of pune what impact do you think the cultural background of pune as a city and the people have on its architecture it is a very wonderful question i feel because architecture the culture and nature and livelihood or where the people come basically so i think everything goes hand in hand so you know in terms of nature we have rivers and you know a very, very like a hot spots for the uh, green zones right and you know there are paved areas which is kind of architecture but you know eventually the culture the temples and you know the peshwai period temples or even older than that maratha period uh, you know there are some stories uh, about uh, you know the structures the, the the shivaji maharaj coming to pune and then he lived in lal mahal and then how the peshwas came they established shanivar wada there so pune was their headquarters yeah. and then they were the ones who actually established all the pet areas so a dwelling type also has a very uh, typical kind of a setting where you have a a facade but then the ground floor mm-hmm. and then the first floor and the second floor and at the back you have a garden and the front you have open veranda kind of a thing so it's like open plan so it was very inviting yeah. so people were very inviting now also if you see some of the uh, some of the wadas that we are we are also restoring few of the wadas in pune now and it is a very welcoming kind of a planning where you know people can gather and come together in the open courtyard and you know the festivals are celebrated the ganpati is is on a big scale in pune when you know it is come to a uh, uh, since when it's come to a public domain it is on a big scale so all these celebrations are celebrated in on the common grounds of a household so definitely the architecture of pune is uh, such a way that you see that you know it's kind of diminishing but the the old part of pune and when you cross the river it is kind of a modern part of pune where the east india company came and they wanted grounds to settle themselves so the camp area uh, uh, you know established in uh, those times in uh, early 20th century or the mid 19th century so once you cross the river it is miniature town of towers you see so the council hall central building sasun hospitals and you know alienation record office these are all buildings built by british but when you come to city areas you see this particular structure this is bahu sahib rangari bhavan where we are today this is one of our projects and you know all other small uh, temples or even temple complexes so this is a kind of a peshwa period so these are two twin towns within pune city so this is a uh, you know culture uh, have uh, brought together so this is a interesting fact about pune so you work mainly with old buildings and all right so do you think architecture old buildings heritage sites they can actually tell us the stories of people of course of course i think uh, every monument uh, you see has uh, some stories i feel you know uh, to take a example pune is very famous for their unique names of the temples jilbya maruti then uh, you know bikardas maruti or khunya murlidhar 
so these are all names of the temple and these names are dedicated to the deity or the temple is because of the incidents which have happened there like like kunya murlidhar kunya murlidhar is famous because during the british period the 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 idol itself it was a basically uh, there was a big fight happened at the temple and uh, it was kind of a you know the whole massacre happened you know in front of the temple itself between the uh, 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 fighters uh, freedom fighters and the british so kunya kunya is khuni mm-hmm. so kunya murli the murli there is a uh, 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 is a krishna basically so the temple got a name of kunya murli there from that one from incident. that one incident oh so in architecture and archaeology there is a separate branch called study of the names Okay. study of the names of the places so like in delhi there is a place called munirka but what is munirka so when we got to know the old oldest plans of seven cities of delhi we got a small detail called munirka gaon munir is a person's name munirka gaon so <laughs> it's okay. just munirka today or just bheem betka and you know jahan bheem betha tha wo jagah so it's bheem betka so there are things like this so uh what significance do you think the people who make these heritage buildings in the past had like now say if we reach a site or a museum or some place that has been restored we mostly observe the building itself right not much is said about the creator of that building okay so what are your thoughts on that like should we this is so uh, more on the yeah. creators along with their creations or of course i mean architectural conservation is such a sensitive field because the process is completely reverse than architectural project mm. in architectural project you have a barren land and you start building on it but here the land is there the building is already set but you need to think of somebody else's point of view is the original creator's point of view and with that sensitivity you need to handle the project because then there is a value to the project already there is a architectural value there is a historical value there is a associational value to that place so handling such projects are tedious jobs basically a very interesting fact about the creators of these monuments interestingly we are working on this uh, project last 5 years called naikwada Excellent. and naiks were the original uh, builders of pune they came from a, a small village in, near jodhpur called fulora and they built lot many buildings which are heritage buildings today right right from shanivar wada to council hall to sasun buildings and even uh, tulsi bag ram mandir and bail bag so many many temples and buildings they have contributed uh to pune and we are working on their wada which is uh, which is spread across 22000 uh, square feet and has seven courtyards oh my God. and it retained today just because uh, the family had only one son in the family for the last seven generations that so is very that lucky is, that is a kind of a lucky thing that's come that's true and uh, so they also have many stories to tell and you know we got so many uh, old papers and uh, you know uh, the old uh, data and literature where it is mentioned that who it built by and who are the original builders right, right. so nandram naik over their uh, ancestors and um, so is this process something you do with all the buildings that you yes install? it's like handling uh, like it's a job of Another a doctor you know the do- when you go to the doctor he ask you about what is your medical mm-hmm. history so you know we begin with a history of any structure that you know come to us there's a heritage structure and then we do the analysis in terms of uh, the condition assessment and you know uh, the historical analysis and the primary surveys and the secondary surveys and based on that we decide our uh, strategy to handle the conservation work because it is not a straightforward process it's extremely context based every building needs a different approach so a, a approach to the temple is different from the approach to this indigenous building the approach to the sasun hospital that we we are doing 
which was built in 1867 and 1903 so both are like a gothic revival and the early gothic period building so approach to them is completely different, different. approach to restore or conserve a fort is completely different so it's it's very you know uh, context based then it one who does not apply to all the conservation projects which one do you think is the most difficult project that you i think it's yet to come i feel i mean all uh-huh. my projects were definitely challenging and every project has has, has their own uh, interest interests and interesting facts and the way i said you need to handle conservation project so sensitively and there is a lot of literature involved in it because uh it's a question of people's faith as well so you cannot damage that in any condition so the sensitivity is extremely important is there any one building that you restored that you became very personally attached to this building itself you know and i am personally attached to my every project you know because it. these projects see we work right from um, we call it mati te sono so what is right from mitti to sona you know we work in the whole range so the this building has the ram earth and the lime and the stone and the brick and the wood and even you know gold leafing that we did for the earth so every aspect of every material the construction system the kind of skill required it's so unique that you need to give personal attention to each and every uh, stage it's it's very unlike uh, architecture projects where architects come do the plinth uh, plinth survey then the first slab survey the second slab survey and the building goes on but here you need to give personal attention to every small detail so every project is very close to my heart and you know i am passionate it's a, i handle it like you know it's it's my own thing because these materials eventually many materials are expensive they are rare many areas we use salvaged materials because these are hard like burmese steak and you know these are quite expensive materials so you need to handle that with the sensitivity again you need to the handle that with the you know we call it sokhandar sokhandar is basically you know given time given material and you know given uh, sources does it have a bother you that you are not making your own creation but rather focusing more on the conservation of uh, it, this, this is a very interesting fact because lot many people ask me this that you know where is your creation where is your creation heritage is something we are passionate about and there are very few who conserve that there are many who build new or create How their own creation it? but uh, you know uh, because unless you don't know where you are rooted you don't know where you are going you know? so i think that is something we are very passionate about do you think we as the common people can can have you know in the conservation of heritage in india as a whole like do you have any advice any tips that commoners can use as well uh, uh this particular generation and uh, you know it's much more mature and sensitive towards uh, heritage nature and also culture so i think you know social media is a wonderful pl- platform to generate awareness to also spread uh, awareness about the heritage uh, to build a community and to uh, capacity building you know uh, sensitive groups basically i think the scenario is changing now the the college is taking uh, good efforts you know uh also to save environment to save heritage so i think it's important that uh, people uh, respect heritage and uh, these uh, structure are not just for the selfies but also you know to uh, get to know more about the Very stories important. related to the uh, heritage so there are many structures which are exhibits in themselves i think we should treat them as uh, the exhibits and we should uh, you know Uh, proud of uh, uh, what we have. I completely agree with that, one hundred percent. One last thing that we wanted to ask you is: Do you think in modern day architecture we find 
sustainable climate responsive architecture i'm totally for it we have done sustainable projects when we work on heritage projects we salvage so many materials that you know it also becomes a kind of uh, saving on uh, new materials basically so in salvaging something what we do if this particular this particular part of wood if if the half part is not good or you know 25% is uh, rotten or deteriorated we remove that and you know we use we use the rest of it so this is with every material even in this particular building every brick that is used to raise this particular wall is been salvaged that sounds lovely thank, thank you, you so much exactly the same way that was all we had to ask you thank you so much thank for taking so much. Time thanks so much thanks a lot thanks to you hello and uh, i am with uh, cheese.social hi so it's a wonderful platform i think it's one of the finest initiative that i came across uh, currently and what you're doing is boot bharat and bhavishya i think it's a fantastic series i think uh, it's it's going to go places and with uh, you guys you are really making efforts and this initiative is uh, so wonderful you know because people love to tell the stories of uh, right now there is a scenario that people want to tell stories but there is no one to hear and social media social platform is such a wonderful way uh, to explore this uh, particular sector where you you know people can share their stories ideas and experiences i think all the best to both of you you both are fantastic this should go viral make it viral <laughs> and uh, all the best thank you so much all the really best. cheese cheese <laughs>